Good evening and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha with news tonight. Before we take you through what made news through the day, Rajya Sabha TV appeals to all its viewers to continue to maintain COVID appropriate behavior in order to stay safe from the pandemic. Always wear face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and maintain physical distancing whenever you step outside. Remember, even with the vaccination drive having begun, we must not lower our guard and continue to take necessary precautions in our fight against COVID-19. And now let's get you the headlines. 2,691 crore rupees assistance released under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen for Uttar Pradesh. 6.1 lakh beneficiaries to benefit Prime Minister says scheme gave poorer sections belief that they too can own a house. Prime Minister Modi to preside over an all-party meeting on 30th January. The government to listen to opposition suggestions on the budget session of parliament. The government also will brief leaders on legislative work. Made in India vaccines to fight COVID-19 reach Bhutan and the Maldives. Over 7,86,000 people vaccinated in India so far. Supreme Court appointed panel on farm laws to meet farmers tomorrow. The government to hold fresh round of talks with farmer organizations on 22nd January. And Joe Biden to be sworn in as the next President of the United States. Kamala Harris to take over as the Vice President. Donald Trump delivers farewell address, extends best wishes to the new administration. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will chair an all-party meeting on the 30th of January, a day after the commencement of the budget session of Parliament. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi has said that in the meeting, the government will put forth its legislative agenda for the budget session and also listen to the suggestions made by other parties. The minister also informed that the meeting will be held virtually and an invitation has been extended to floor leaders of all political parties. An all-party meeting is usually held before the beginning of every session of parliament to ensure its smooth functioning. However, this time it is being held a day after the session starts on the 29th of January. Prime Minister Narendra Modi released a financial assistance of 2,691 crore rupees under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen on Wednesday. He also interacted with the beneficiaries in the state of Uttar Pradesh through video conferencing. More details we present to you in this report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday released an assistance of 2,691 crore rupees to 6.1 lakh beneficiaries in Uttar Pradesh under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. The sum includes the first installment for 5.3 lakh beneficiaries and second installment for 80,000 beneficiaries. The Prime Minister said in just five years, the scheme has made the vulnerable sections believe that they too can own a house. आत्मनिर्भर भारत का सीधा संबंध देश के नागरिकों के आत्मविश्वास से है और घर एक ऐसी व्यवस्था है एक ऐसा सम्मानजनक तोहफा है जो इंसान का आत्मविश्वास कई गुना बढ़ा देती है अगर अपना घर होता है तो एक निश्चिंतता होती है गरीब को पक्की छत देने के लिए प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना ग्रामीण शुरू की गई थी देश ने आजादी के 75 साल पूरे होने तक हर गरीब परिवार को पक्का घर देने का लक्ष्य तय किया था इस लक्ष्य को पूरा करने के लिए 
बीते वर्षों में लगभग दो करोड़ घर सिर्फ ग्रामीण इलाकों में ही बनाए गए हैं द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेट अलोंग विद द हाउसेज facilities like gas cylinders and electricity connections are a tool for women's empowerment in rural india ye aawas gramin kshetron mein mahilaon ke sashaktikaran ka bhi ek bahut bada madhyam ban rahe hain kyunki adhiktar aawas ghar ki mahilaon ke naam par hi aavantit kiye ja rahe hain jinke paas zameen nahi hai उन्हें जमीन का पट्टा भी दिया जा रहा है ही ऑल्सो टारगेटेड प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट से पुअर है ब्रांड ऑफ देयर रॉन्ग पॉलिसीज जब पहले की सरकार थी बाद में आपने तो उनको हटा दिया मुझे याद है कि 2016 में हमने ये योजना लॉन्च की थी तो कितनी परेशानियां आई थी पहले जो सरकार थी उसे कितनी ही बार भारत सरकार की तरफ से मेरे दफ्तर से चिट्ठियां लिखी गई थी कि भाई गरीबों के लाभार्थियों के जरा नाम भेजिए ताकि इस योजना का लाभ उनके बैंक खातों में हम पैसे भेजते हैं हम पैसे भेजने के लिए तैयार थे पैसे तैयार थे लेकिन केंद्र सरकार की सारी चिट्ठियों को अनेक बैठकों के दौरान किए गए आग्रह को नजरअंदाज किया जाता रहा उस सरकार का वो बर्ताव आज भी यूपी का गरीब भुला नहीं है द प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना ग्रामीण वॉज लॉन्च इन नवंबर 2016 थाउजेंड टू प्रोवाइड हाउसिंग टू ऑल बाय द ईयर 2022। थाउजेंड सो फॉर वन करोड़ ट्वेंटी सिक्स लैख हाउसेज हैव बीन बिल्ड अंडर द स्कीम अक्रॉस द कंट्री Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV The Union Cabinet on Wednesday chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi was apprised of the signing of MOU between India and Uzbekistan for cooperation in the field of solar energy According to the statement the main area of work under is to identify research demonstration pilot projects between the National Institute of Solar Energy Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and the International Solar Energy Institute of Uzbekistan in the mutually identified areas these areas are solar photovoltaic storage technologies and transfer of technology based on mutual agreement both parties would work for implementation and deployment of pilot projects in the international solar alliance member countries apart from this the union cabinet also approved the investment proposal of 5281 crore rupees for 850 megawatt rattle hydropower project located on river chenab in kishtwar district of jammu and kashmir the next round of talks between the central government and the farmers representatives has been scheduled for the 22nd of january the 10th round of talks held between the government and the farmers leaders remained inconclusive on wednesday addressing media persons agriculture minister narendra singh tomar said The government has proposed to suspend the three farm laws for one and a half years and set up a joint committee to discuss these acts. The minister also said he feels that talks are progressing in the right direction and that there is a possibility of finding a solution to the problem on the 22nd of January. हमने विस्तार पूर्वक उन्हें कहा कि कानूनों पर विचार करना है और आंदोलन से जुड़े विभिन्न पहलुओं पर विचार करना है तो निश्चित रूप से समय तो चाहिए और समय चाहिए तो वो समय छः महीने का भी हो सकता है एक साल का भी हो सकता है डेढ़ साल का भी हो सकता है और सरकार एक डेढ़ साल तक भी कानून के क्रियान्वयन को स्थगित करने के लिए सहमत है इस दौरान किसान और सरकार के प्रतिनिधि मिलकर समस्याओं का हल खोजें और जो समाधान हो उस समाधान को आगे बढ़ाया जाए मूविंग ऑन सम अदर न्यूज द नीति आयोग ऑन वेन स्टेट रिलीज द सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ द इंडिया इनोवेशन इंडेक्स टू 
This index demonstrates the government's continued commitment towards transforming the country into an innovation-driven economy. Karnataka maintained its top position among the major states category in the ranking, followed by Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Kerala. Among the union territories, Delhi, Chandigarh and Daman and Diu were adjudged the toppers. While Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Manipur occupied the top three spots in the Northeast and Hilly States category. The last edition of the India Innovation Index, released in October 2019, was a first of its kind metric for assessing the innovation capabilities of Indian states and union territories. The 2020 edition has been updated to include globally considered parameters for measuring innovation, such as the percentage of GDP spent on research and development, keeping them specific to the Indian economy. While releasing the India Innovation Index 2020, Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog, Rajiv Kumar, said, the index illust illustrates that India is on the right path and the states are endeavouring to improve their innovative ecosystem. While the CEO of Niti Aayog, Amitabh Khan, said that innovation will play a key role in making the country self-reliant and also heading towards the $5 trillion economy. Very technologically turbulent world where uh, technology, innovation, artificial intelligence, deep machine learning, robotization, the biochemical revolution, the, 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 the coming together of bio and, uh, and artificial intelligence, all of that means that innovation will be the key as we go forward. And therefore, uh, in that context, uh, trying to spur innovative activity at the state level, I think, is, is important. This is in line with what Niti Aayog has been doing to push the spirit of competitive federalism. We have done this in health, in education, in uh, hospitals, in many other areas. And we believe that as we march towards becoming a five trillion economy, innovation will play a key role in upholding the spirit of Atmanirbhar Bharat. And talking about India's mission vaccination, Bhutan and Maldives have become the first two countries to receive the COVID-19 vaccines from India under grants assistance in sync with its neighborhood first policy. 1,50,000 doses of Serum Institute's Covishield vaccines were sent to Bhutan, while 1 lakh vaccine doses to Maldives as part of India's grant assistance. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar shared photos of the consignments reaching both the countries and said it is a reflection of our special friendship. He also called it an example of India's neighbourhood first policy. Taking to Twitter, Moldavian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the vaccines. Bhutanese Foreign Minister Tandi Dorji also thanked India for the generous gift. Besides Bhutan and Maldives, India is also sending COVID-19 vaccines to Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar and Seychelles in a phased manner. Vaccine supplies to Sri Lanka, Afghanistan and Mauritius will also start after necessary regulatory clearances. Over 7,86,000 people have been vaccinated for COVID-19 across the country so far. Briefing the media on Wednesday, Additional Health Secretary Dr. Manohar Agnani said that nearly 1,12,000 beneficiaries were inoculated across 20 states and union territories on the day. In all, 14,119 vaccine sessions have been held in the country so far. Aaj dinak sham 6 baje tak humne 7,86,842 logon ko कोविड का टीका लगाया है और यह सारा टीकाकरण 14,119 सत्रों के माध्यम से हुआ है यह आंकड़े शाम 6 बजे तक के हैं और प्रावधानिक हैं आज 6 बजे तक जो आज टीकाकरण हुआ वो 20 राज्यों में हुआ और उसमें सारे देश में 112,007 लोगों को टीका लगाया गया
Dr. Agnani also informed that hospitalization of cases following COVID-19 vaccination has been reported from six states, Uttarakhand, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Delhi, Karnataka and West Bengal. On the death figures, he said, four deaths have been reported from Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka and Telangana so far. He also clarified that deaths from UP and Karnataka were not related to vaccination, while a post-mortem report is awaited in the case reported from Telangana. Meanwhile, India continues to report sustained decline in the daily new cases of coronavirus, with 13,823 new infections reported in the last 24 hours. India's COVID-19 caseload crossed 1 crore 5 lakh. The total active caseload has fallen below the 2 lakh mark, comprising only 1.86% of the total positive cases. India's daily new fatalities have also declined substantially. 162 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, taking the total death, uh, death count in the country to 1,52,718. Also, with nearly 17,000 recoveries reported in the same period, the total recoveries in the country have crossed 1.02 crore. The national recovery rate has improved to 96.7%. Over 7,64,000 samples were tested on Tuesday. More than 18.85 crore samples have been tested in the country so far. Time for a short break here. More news and updates will continue on the other side. Do stay with us. Watch The Big Picture at 9.30 p.m. Only on Rajya Sabha Television. Defeat coronavirus. Let us always remember, wear a mask. Wash hands. Follow physical distancing. Together, we'll succeed. Together, we'll win against COVID-19. Thanks for staying with us on News Tonight. The Assam Assembly polls will be held, taking into consideration the festivals in the month of April and the CBSE board examinations for students scheduled between the 4th of May to the 10th of June. This was confirmed by Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora, who is part of the Election Commission team on a visit to poll-bound Assam. The CEC also informed that people excluded from the National Register of Citizens list can also vote in the coming elections as their names are currently on the voters' list. According to the Election Commission, elections will be held in strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols. The number of auxiliary polling booths would be increased and the number of electors at each polling station has been restricted to 1,000 as against the existing 1,500. At best order, this should be MHA. That non inclusion of a person's name in NRC does not by itself amount to him or her being declared as a foreigner. By implication, such persons remain on the voter list and shall be eligible to vote until a decision is taken by the consent tribunal. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh co chaired the fifth India Singapore Defence Minister's Dialogue along with Singapore's Defence Minister, Dr. Neng Eng Hen, through video conferencing. Both ministers expressed satisfaction at the progress of the ongoing defence cooperation engagements between the two countries, despite the limitations imposed by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Terming the meet as a productive one, Rajnath Singh said that India is fortunate to have a defence partner like Singapore. He added that today's interaction will benefit both countries on many bilateral issues, that are being pursued in order to further strengthen special, uh, special relationship between both countries. The ministers also witnessed the signing of the Implementing Agreement on Submarine Rescue Support and Cooperation signed between the Indian Navy and the Republic of Singapore Navy. The Supreme Court has dismissed a plea seeking review of its 2018 verdict upholding the centre's flagship Aadhaar scheme as constitutionally valid. A five-judge bench headed by Justice A.M. Khanwilkar, by a majority of four is to one, 
rejected the review pleas against the apex court September 26, 2018 verdict. Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, one of the five judges of the bench, dissented with the majority verdict. The present review petitions have been filed against the final judgment and order dated 26th of September 2018. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that COVID-19 pandemic has taught us the importance of good ventilation and sunlight for our health. Releasing the book titled A Textbook of Urban Planning and Geography on Wednesday, the Vice President called for making the cities accessible, inclusive and sustainable. He also suggested that urban planning must be done with local aesthetics and local traditions. But in the last two decades, India has been witnessing rapid urbanization. I mean, Hyderabad now, see how Hyderabad is developing fast. Nearly 40% of our population is living in cities. And the share is expected to become more than 60% by 2050. The United Nations projects that by projects that by 2050. India would add another 416 million urban dwellers to its cities. This correlates with the experience around the world as a consequence of economic growth. My dear friends, urban planning and its importance. Urbanization brings in its share of opportunities and challenges. Opportunities as well as challenges. These challenges include limited resource of land, water, and infrastructure, competing interest of diverse mix of people, and ever increasing and mobile population. The Vice President also said city planners should not only focus on making cities livable, but also work for raising the happiness quotient of the people. He asked people to live in harmony with nature, Besides, the Vice President also emphasized that cities must have vibrant public spaces and not secluded apartments alone. Friends, I believe that these three components to good urban planning, one, accessibility, two, inclusivity, and three, sustainability. If these three requirements are balanced, and fulfilled, it makes a great livable city. Accessibility. First is accessibility. Accessibility refers to the ease, choice, and uninterrupted nature of access to amenities and infrastructure facilities like transport, housing, and civic amenities like water, gas, and waste management, as well as traffic management also nowadays. To begin with, many urban centers in India struggled for sufficient supply of potable water, public transport infrastructure, affordable housing, and a functioning solid waste management. India and France began a five-day mega air exercise, X Desert Night 21, near Jodhpur on Wednesday. The Indian Air Force will deploy Rafale, Sukhoi and Mirage 2000 combat jets, among other key assets in the exercise with the French Air and Space Force. The French side will participate with Rafale, Airbus A330, multi-role tanker transport, A400M tactical transport aircraft, while around 175 French personnel will also be part of the exercise. The French and Indian Air Forces have been conducting Garur exercises to boost operational cooperation. So far, six editions of Garur have taken place. In a short while from now, Joe Biden will be sworn in as the 46th President of the United States of America, while Kamala Harris will take oath as the 49th Vice President of the country amidst unprecedented security. Biden and Harris will be sworn in at the west front of the U.S. Capitol during the 59th presidential inaugura inauguration ceremony. Harris will make history as America's first woman and first person with South Asian roots to take the office of the vice president. Chief Justice John Roberts will administer the oath of office to 78-year-old Biden. 
Joe Biden will take the oath on his 127-year-old family Bible, which will be held by his wife, Jill Biden. Besides Joe Biden, who will be the oldest president in American history, he will deliver his first presidential address to the country shortly after taking the oath. The security in the Capitol has been beefed up following the 6th January Capitol riots. Around 25,000 troops will guard the inauguration ceremony in Washington, D.C. Also, due to COVID restrictions, people have been appealed to be at their homes and watch the oath-taking ceremony on television. And Donald Trump left the White House for the final time as the U.S. president on Wednesday, skipping the inauguration of successor Joe Biden as the 46th U.S. president in an extraordinary break with tradition. A small crowd waved goodbye as Trump and uh, Melania Trump, the first lady, walked a short red carpet and boarded the Marine One helicopter for the short flight to the Andrews Air Force Base. Trump gave his last address as the President of the United States before boarding an Air Force One to Florida. In his farewell address as the President, Donald Trump extended his wishes to the new administration. Trump also promised to always fight and said America is a great country and economy in the world, and he said it is his greatest honor and privilege to have been the President of the United States. He also thanked his family and friends who were in attendance on the side of the stage while he was speaking. As I prepare to hand power over to a new administration at noon on Wednesday, I want you to know that the movement we started is only just beginning. There's never been anything like it. The belief that a nation must serve its citizens will not dwindle, but instead only grow stronger by the day. As long as the American people hold in their hearts deep and devoted love of country, then there is nothing that this nation cannot achieve. Our communities will flourish. Our people will be prosperous. Our traditions will be cherished. Our faith will be strong and our future will be brighter than ever before. I go from this majestic place with a loyal and joyful heart an optimistic spirit and a supreme confidence that for our country and for our children, the best is yet to come. And back home, devotees throng to Gurdwaras to offer prayers across the country on the 354th Jayanti of Guru Gobind Singh. The President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister pay tribute to the Sikh Guru on his Prakash Purab. President Ramnath Kovind remembered Guru Gobind Singh on the occasion, saying his life has been inspiring for the whole of humanity, propagating equality and inclusiveness. Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Sikh Guru, was a spiritual master, warrior, poet and philosopher. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu also extended greetings on the birth anniversary of Guru Gobind Singh, saying his name epitomizes courage and compassion. He reiterated that the Guru's teachings are eternally relevant and will continue to inspire generations to come. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid homage to Guru Gobind Singh, saying the 10th Sikh Guru's life was devoted to create a just and inclusive society. He also said, Guru Gobind Singh was unwavering when it came to upholding his principles. And that's it from us in this bulletin. But before we leave, Rajya Sabha TV once again appeals to all its viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Don't forget to wear your face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and maintain physical distancing each time you step outside. Remember, these simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic, which is not over yet. Good night. Thank you very much for your time.